right, this section is all about uh, rational functions and their graphs. So we're going to look at some other kinds of rational functions and how we graph them and what happens to them. So vocabulary. A rational function is a function that you can write in any form where it's one function divided by another function, as long as they're both functions. The rational function x squared divided by x squared plus 1 has no values that make the denominator 0 because we can't make x squared be a negative 1. So it's a continuous graph. So there are no parts on the graph where there's anything missing. For the function x plus 3 times x plus 2 divided by x plus 2, x cannot be negative 2. So this is a discontinuous graph. So any time where you have a value that it can't be based on your original function, it's a discontinuous graph. So our point of discontinuity. If a is a real number that makes the denominator 0, then a is not in the domain of f of x. The graph of f of x is not continuous at x equals a, and the function has a point of discontinuity. So all that says is there's if there's a specific place, something that makes your denominator be 0, that is a point of discontinuity. Now, if it's a removable discontinuity, that means you can factor it out, and x minus 2 or x equals negative 2, is a removable point because you can factor out x plus 2 and x plus 2 from the numerator and the denominator. So that's a removable discontinuity. For a non-removable discontinuity, if we have x plus 4 divided by x minus 2, those factors are not the same, so um, you can't take out the negative 2 or the 2. It has to stay there. So that's a non-removable point of discontinuity. So based on whether it's removable or non-removable, you're either going to have a hole in your graph or you're going to have an asymptote right there. All right, so finding points of discontinuity. What are the domain and points of discontinuity of each rational function? Are the points of discontinuity, discontinuity removable or non-removable? And what are the x and y intercepts? So here's our first one. y equals x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 4x plus 3. Now, in order to decide, first of all, um, if this is a rational function, we have to look at the numerator, y equals x plus 3. Is x plus 3 a function? Yes, it is. So then we look at the denominator, x squared minus 4x plus 3. Is this a function? Yes, we have all values that can be our domain. Now, we need to, so it is a rational function. Um, are the points of discontinuity remo removable or non-removable? In order to figure that out, we need to factor the denominator. So whenever you see like a trinomial, you need to factor it. So x plus 3 is our numerator. What does this factor into in our denominator? What number multiplies to be negative 3 but adds to be negative 4? x minus 3, x minus 1. Okay, even though we have x plus 3 and x and a 3, there's a minus. So these cannot cancel. So this would be a non-removable discontinuity. And what are our x and y intercepts? Where does it cross the x and the y axis? Okay, so our function is undefined at x equals 3 and 1 because those are the values that make our denominator be 0. Um, I forgot to include that when we did the factoring part. And they are non-removable. And the x-intercept is where the numerator equals 0. So x-intercept is always the numerator. So if negative 3 plus 3 is 0, that's your x-intercept. Um, let x be 0 to find your y-intercept. So plug in 0 for all of those. So you have 0 plus 3, there's 3 in your numerator. 0, 0 plus 3, 3 is in your denominator. 3 divided by 3 is 1. That's your y-intercept. Pretty easy. Okay, I want you to try these. Tell me if um, they are functions, and then what are the points of discontinuity? Are they removable, non-removable? What are your x and what are your y intercepts? This is going to be your lesson check, just because there's a lot involved in that, so you need to know. All right, did you finish those? Make sure you have them done. All right, finding vertical asymptotes. So let's look at um, this. We're going to look at the vertical asymptotes for the graph of y equals x plus 1 divided by x minus 2, x minus 3. Now, what are our points of discontinuity? Anything that makes our denominator be 0. So into this one, we could plug 2. 
This one we could plug 3. So these x equals 2 and 3 are our points of discontinuity. Are they removable or non-removable? If they are non-removable, then they are vertical asymptotes. So these are our vertical asymptotes, x equals 2 and x equals 3. Okay, what about this one? x minus 2 divided by x minus 1, x plus 3. What are our points of discontinuity? We have 1 and we have negative 3. Are either one of those removable? Neither one are removable, so these are our asymptotes. So at x equals 1 and x equals negative 3, we have vertical asymptotes. And that means the ones that go up and down. An asymptote means approaches, never touches. What about this one? Well, we would have to factor the top into x plus 1, x minus 1, over x plus 1. What's our point of discontinuity? x equals negative 1. But is it removable or non-removable? Well, those you can factor out. It is removable, so we don't have any vertical asymptotes. Um, what we call this is a hole. If you can remove it, then you just have a hole in your graph where that x value is. So your graph is continuous up to that point. You make a circle to show that there's a hole, and then you continue with your graph. Okay, to find horizontal asymptotes, uh, these are looking at your um, powers of x in your um, function. So if I have 2x over x minus 3, what is my power on my x? My numerator is 1, my denominator is 1, so we just take the powers. 1 divided by 1, 1. Horizontal asymptote. Oh, sorry. When the powers are the same, you take the coefficients. It's only when the powers are different that you do that. That is my fault. Okay, so you take the coefficient. So 2 and understood 1 in front of this one. Okay, what about this one? x minus 2 in the numerator, x squared minus 2x minus 3 in the denominator. Now, this time are my um, values the same for my x1 on x? No. This one is understood to be 1, and this one's understood to be 2. If it's greater, the power is greater in the denominator, then your um, asymptote is y equals 0. Always, always, always. So if it's greater in the denominator than the numerator, it's always 0. And the opposite is true. If it's greater in the numerator than the, denom than the de denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote. So these are the three rules you need to remember. If your x's have the same power, you divide the coefficients. If your x power is greater in the denominator, your horizontal ax, uh, asymptote is always y equals 0. If your power is greater in the numerator, there's no horizontal asymptote. Got it? I know this is a lot to remember. Okay, so let's graph a rational function. What is the graph of the rational function? x squared plus x minus 12 divided by x squared minus 4. Well, in order to do this, we're going to need to um, rewrite this as factors and decide if we have anything that's removable or non-removable. So y equals, I'm going to factor x squared plus x minus 12. Factors that multiply to be negative 12 add to be positive 1, our x plus 4, and x minus 3. In my denominator, I need to factor this. Factors that multiply to be negative 4 but add to be 0. This is x plus 2, x minus 2. Now if you look, we don't have anything that factors out. And if we look at our, um, okay, so our points of discontinuity are x equals negative 2 and positive 2. They are non-removable, which means they're going to be a what? An asymptote or a whole they will be a hole. So we have two holes in our graph. Um, what about our vertical asymptotes? Vertical asymptotes is whatever makes the... Sorry, I said that backwards. I take it back. Those are not holes. Those are the vertical asymptotes because they're non-removable. And for our horizontal asymptotes, we look at our squares. So it's x squared, x squared. We'll have a coefficient of 1 divided by 1. So we get y equals 1. 
So then we go ahead and we need to plot all this on some kind of graph somewhere. So let me pull up a graph. Alright, so we have asymptotes at y equals 1. We also have asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals negative 2. Now we just need to figure out what our graph does from here to there. That's fun. So we just have to pick some numbers and whatever we plug in, we try. Ah, that's not what I meant to do. This is what I meant to do. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go for it. X, Y. So a value for X, zero is easy. Let's see, we have four times negative three, that's negative 12, divided by um, two times negative two, that's negative four, that makes three. So zero, three is a point. Um, let's do negative one and positive one. See what happens in the middle there. Um, so negative one plus four is three. Three times negative four is negative twelve over, let's see, that's one times negative three, negative three, that's four. Positive one is five times negative two, that's negative ten, over three times negative one, that's negative three. So negative ten thirds, that's about right here. So it looks like this kind of thing is happening in the middle. Now we need to pick values that are smaller than negative two, so like negative three. See, that's one times negative six, negative six. There's one times negative five, negative five. Um, negative four, that's, ooh, zero. So we got this going on over here. And now I need one, two, three. Three plus four is seven. Oh, times zero. zero. And it's going to do this thing over here as well. All right. See, aren't these fun? Yeah. Okay. So that's all for this lesson. I know there was a lot in there, so make sure you study what makes a horizontal asymptote, what makes a vertical asymptote, when do I know if it's an asymptote or when it's a whole, um, and then really brush up on your factoring. All right.